and welcome back to another episode of the floating island series. Last time we created a set of bigger roots which hang down from the island and then connect back to the mesh. The next batch of roots are supposed to behave a bit different and are also separated into two behaviors. The first one is seemingly hanging down very close to the surface of the island but after a specific level they are just supposed to hang down. While the thicker roots were created by these initial points created by this scatter node, the second batch will use a lot more points. These I also created in the last episode and they basically just scatter points on the surface that are below minus one on the y axis. I want to handle each point separately, so I create a for each loop and the initial behavior is very similar to the first batch. So I'm going to copy over these two wrangles that create new points and combine them to a polyline. And just as a reminder, the first node created two additional points based on the current point. The first one using a random distance and is placed somewhere below the first point and the second one was back on the surface of the island. We will no longer need that one since we're now using another approach. And after we delete the now unnecessary vertex, we get our polyline. This now is very similar to our vine setup and we still have all the options to manipulate the result. Next we're going to need a lot more points on these roots and we're going to use each point to change the overall shape of the root. Then again I need an identifier to mark the position of each point on the polyline. For that I will later on use the curfew attribute the resample node can provide me with. But to stay persistent with the other branch of roots I'm still going to apply the red gradient. Just now, whenever I'm going to use the red color later, I could also simply use the curfew attribute. You will see why in a bit. But the color gradient is still a pretty handy trick. So initialize the color and then fill the X component of the color with the point number divided by the amount of points. And just to have a bit more control, I also throw in the fit Z1 so that I can change the range of that color. But now to the behavior of the root. For that, I create another attribute wrangle and this wrangle again uses the body of the island in the second input. And this wrangle is supposed to move the points towards the surface of the island. Now to get a good example of what I'm going to do, I set the loop to single pass. That way I can look at one specific iteration. First I want to handle those that start at the top and try to stay close to the wall. Now what I have in mind would probably also work with the minpos function I used last time. But this time I'm going to use the intersect function. First I define a few variables I'm going to use and then I'm going to save the position of the first point on the line. And right after that I'm going to create a float variable that I use as a height threshold. That threshold is based on a random number using the current iteration of the loop. That means it's going to be the same for all points on one polyline. And with the fit function, again I make it possible to adjust the outgoing range of values. To define that range, I opened additional channels. And after I created the UI elements, I can set the min and max value of the height threshold that is unique for each polyline. And for my setting, I'm going to choose a min value of minus 3 and max of minus 5. But before showing you what that means, let's switch to a darker background to make it a bit more visible. Now what this height threshold variable allows me to do is to create a range for each line and when it starts within that range I will use the mentioned logic. If it however starts below that range I will not apply that logic. By basing this on the current loop iteration the exact value of the threshold will always be slightly different. By doing that we will have a much smoother transition between the roots changing their behavior. To get access to the current iteration number we have to go to the beginning of our for each loop. Here we can create a meta node. That meta node will automatically generate some detail attributes and one of them is the iteration. Now that the meta node exists we can address that detail attribute in our wrangle. We simply have to use an expression in the input field we created earlier. The expression is called detail. It needs the name of the node, the name of the attribute and the index in case we're using a vector. And now it's time to activate that curfew attribute. 
So go to the resample node, scroll down and there it is. And just in case you don't know what that does, this will create a new attribute saving a value from 0 to 1 on each point of the line according to the order in the line. But now let's get to the logic itself. First we need an if condition to check if the current line falls in the one or the other category. In this condition I want to check if the position of the first point in this line is above the calculated height threshold and I also want to make sure that whatever displacement I'm going to do will not affect the first point. But if the poly line is at the right place, I want to create a direction. And that direction goes from the current position to the center of the island's bounding box. It's always really helpful to visualize what you did with the data. And there's a really easy way to do that. Just make this direction a vector attribute, hit D while you're in the viewport and go to the visualizer tab. Let's create a new one. This one is for testing purposes. It's supposed to show us a vector from the attribute direction. And now you can see what the operation does. And it's important to notice that this time we don't use a normalize. This time we want to have the full length of the vector. Each point on all the poly lines that match our condition has saved the direction attribute. And as you can see here, those poly lines below our threshold don't get that attribute. So let's create the intersect function I mentioned earlier. The result of the function goes into an integer variable and I'm going to use it with the data from the second input. The origin position comes from at p, the direction is saved in dir and the intersect function needs two additional parameters. Those I call pv and uv. Then I'm going to check the value of the intersect return variable. If it failed, it would return minus one. So if it's not minus one, I know that I hit something. And in this scenario, that should happen all the time. But still, it's always a good idea to build in control checks. But what can I do with the data from the intersect? To show you that, let's make this an attribute again. The intersect will follow the yellow line until it connects with any primitive. As soon as that happens, the number of that primitive will be returned and saved in the integer variable. But more importantly, the position where the hit occurred is saved in one of the additional parameters, in our case in PV. And now that we have that position, we can use a very cool trick. First we overwrite the vector we saved in dir. This time we want to get the direction from the current point to that hit position. This will be the exact same direction, but this time the length of the vector matches the distance to the surface. When we now add that direction on top of our position, we get a line clinging to the surface. This also could be an interesting look, but I want to multiply that with the curfew attribute. This will result in very small movements on the first points, but with growing effect the further we go on the polyline. Until finally the last point is connecting again with the surface. At that point, most of those lines will be below the island body. Then it's only a question of tweaking and the look you're after. It also depends very strongly of your island's shape. For my example, I'm satisfied with the look I get with a max value of minus 7 and minus 5 as min value. And the last steps are nothing new anymore. We can copy over the noise and the poly wire from last episode. Those used the red color as driver for the scale of the noise and also for the thickness of the wire. And with that our root setup is finished. Now we only have to merge both batches of roots, bring in some color and do a test render. I hope you found something useful and I see you next time. But before I go, a big thank you goes out to my patrons that so quickly jumped on board to support me. <laughs>